So we'll go ahead and start to take our future shock apart. Now to do that, we're just going to go ahead and take the top cap off first. Now on this, the top cap actually does not do any of the preload work. Uh, it's actually just a top cap and a screw here. With the top cap off, you can just go ahead and loosen the stem and you'll see that the stem itself will actually slide up right off of the future shock. So the future shock here uh, is attached to the steer tube and into the fork, and it actually has its mount down underneath this plastic cap, which we'll take a look at in a few. But it's gonna come with a little spacer here. This spacer actually adapts it uh, to fit the shape of the future shock. So the future shock is smaller in diameter than a, a standard uh, inch and an eighth steer tube. So you've got this adapter which clamps down and then puts friction onto the future shock. So our next step here to take the future shock off is going to be to actually unscrew the preload. So these screws that are right here, that's actually to unscrew the preload on the headset bearing. So we'll just go ahead and unscrew the preload on our headset. So you can see there's actually one of these screws on both sides. So all we're doing is unscrewing this. To do that, we just need a two and a half millimeter. Once we have that loosened up, we can then use our four millimeter wrench and we're actually gonna go into the clamp that allows the future shock to attach uh, onto the steer tube here. So lefty loosey on that, and the future shock will actually slide right out. So this is what a future shock looks like. So it's a cartridge that slides right into the frame. Uh, this can actually be raised and lowered based on different caps that come with it. So with your diverge, you'll actually get a couple different heights of these caps. Uh, that way you'll be able to change the height as needed. And once we have that open, we should actually be able to see into the headset a little bit better. What we were unscrewing before was just taking a little bit of preload off of the headset bearing before we loosen this up just to make sure that it didn't, uh, didn't come apart but now we should be able to take the collar uh, off of the steer tube. So this collar, um, go ahead and place that in there. It's got just a, a small little locator. That's to make sure uh, that you place the collar on in the proper spot. And now the collar should be able to slide right out. Get everything undone. and the collar is going to come straight off of the fork in the steer tube here. You'll see that there's a small little hole on the steer tube. That's for uh, the locator to go into to make sure that you place this exactly in the right spot. And now as we take the headset apart, it's just going to come apart kind of like a standard bike. So in the top here, you're going to have, this is the upper race that you're putting preload onto, then you'll have a standard headset bearing, standard frame opening, and then on the bottom, it looks like that as well. So that's taking the front fork apart. Here's your fork steer tube, also with a, uh, a lower bearing. And you can see that the overall size of the steer tube is quite large. Uh, and that's because this is allowing our future shock to actually slide into it. So now that we've gone ahead and we've taken apart the fork and the frame, let's go ahead and see what's inside the future shock. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how to take the future shock apart. Uh, so this is gonna allow us to get into the spring that's uh, inside of the future shock. The spring's actually inside of here and they come in different spring rates to adjust it to your liking. It's not based on weight, it's actually just based on ride feel. 
Uh, so to do that, uh, you actually don't even have to take this cartridge out of the fork. Uh, you can leave this in the bike and then all you're gonna do is go ahead and unscrew this black cap. So we'll get this unscrewed here. It'll come apart. And then what you'll have inside is just the top. This is gonna have some grease in it. So inside of there, you're just gonna have uh, your spring. Now the spring on the Diverge Future Shock is actually a progressive rate, meaning it gets stiffer the further through the, uh, the spring rate. On the Roubaix, it's a linear rate. So uh, they both use the same style of Future Shock, but on the, uh, the Diverge, you have this uh, progressive spring and you can get different uh, weights of these springs, meaning uh, different spring rates. So that way you can have ones that are a little stiffer or a little softer. That's not based on rider weight, that's actually just based on preference. Now you would just pull it out, put some grease on it. You can slide this one right back into place. We'll keep the, uh, the factory grease on. And then to put it back together, it's really just as simple as screwing it back together. Let's take a look at what the Future Shock weighs in at. So the Future Shock on its own, it's gonna weigh in at 307 grams. So fairly heavy, but then we'll add in the adapter to run the inch and an eighth fork, your collar, which actually bolts down onto the, uh, the fork steer tube. And then finally the top cap, which puts it all together meaning a total weight of 367 grams.